any time you swap, you just swap line instead of one line. Is there any difference? No, there are at least three different ways you can show it. Yeah, you can either go on and shift it to the left like I did, or you can start highlighting items that are in order already, or otherwise you can create two tables and keep moving from table to table. But uh, <coughs> whatever you do, make sure you show all the steps. Yeah. And, and obviously we need to show up all those arrows yes. and highlight things, yeah? The only exception is arrows. Yeah, I don't require arrows, but at least highlight what is minimum and then yes, move so it. So to make some sense what's going on, yeah? Exactly. And to prove to me that you didn't just arrange it in order, because I believe you can all arrange numbers in order, right? Yeah. But okay. I need to test whether you use that <laughs> procedure, right? I hope you can. Ah, cool. <laughs> Uh, I was marking some year zero papers this morning and some people can't even count to 11. Would you Come mind? on. There are a few letters and then cannot even count to 11. So anyway. There's still time. Really good. <laughs> good. <laughs> very good, very good. All right, so that's the answer to question number two. Uh, let's move on to question number three. Which is how many marks? Okay, it doesn't say here, does it? Okay, so question number two was three marks. Yeah, and number three is two marks. What's the total mark you need to pass? Minimum twenty-four, but it very much depends on what you got as well from the test, right? Aye. Yeah, but twenty-four is the raw pass mark just for this document for the exam on Saturday. Yeah, twenty-four out of sixty marks. Okay. Which is equal to forty percent. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Question number three for two marks. Experiment is run in which two special dice are thrown. The first die is three-sided and, uh, and contains numbers six, two, and seven. The other die is four-sided and its sides show nine, three, four, and one. Draw so probability three for this experiment and calculate the likelihood of getting two even numbers. I'm trying to do in my mind, how do you make a die which has three sides? Every time you can have a triangle. Well, triangle oh. dice, yeah. Triangle yeah. and pyramid. Yeah. Well, in the third one, we'll be at the bottom, it isn't is, it? Look, it's a special... Oh, no. a like special a pyramid. pyramid. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean... Hmm. You should ask Ali, because... The, he ah, here we go, they do, ones. yeah. You, you can cut them in many different ways and forms. Nah, I mean, uh, not, not here in any of the pictures. Anyway, that's that's secondary issue. Yeah, in an abstract the uh, world, basically. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but no, he, he got me thinking now, you know? <laughs> right. From a single point, we have two experiments happening, okay? Probability three always grows from a single point and it spreads into however many options you have from the first part of the experiment. So if it's a three-sided die first, it can split into three directions because the outcome can either be six or two or seven. Yeah, we can go into one of the routes. Three options. Now, from the question, I assume that the dice, the two dice, are independent. Okay? Whatever I got from the first one has no impact on the other one. If I got a six originally, from the second die, I could get either a nine or a three or a four or a one. Okay? Second dice being thrown after getting a six. I can get 9 or 3 or 4 or 1. No, we, we only have one tree for the overall experiment. Two actions happening? In one, one tree. tree. So, so, so you don't want you to have mm -hmm. 9, 3, 4, 1. Yeah. Can it, can it be, can we, can we do that on, on 2 or you don't have it? Yeah, that's my point, because it doesn't matter what you got from the first one, the second one can still give you either a nine or three or a four or a one. Yeah, that's the whole, the whole point, really. No matter where you ended up with the first one, you can still go into four directions. That's your probability three, from which you are drawing what we call sample space, all possible outcomes. Six with nine, six with three, six with four, six one, two nine, two three, two four, two one, Seven nine seven three seven four seven one. Just traversing 
all possible branches. Notice the question asks for the likelihood of getting two even numbers, probability two even numbers. Well, I get two even numbers if I manage to get six and four, or two four. That's the only cases. These are the only cases, right? So I have two cases, two outcomes, out of how many outcomes in total? Out of 12. 12 outcomes, yeah? So likelihood, the probability is two out of 12, which should be simplified into one over six. Simplify your fraction and just leave it. You have no need to change it into percentage or decimal, <coughs> but make sure you simplify your fraction. Right. Two E in the bracket, Two even. 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 Two Okay. Anybody else want to ask oh, me for the fourth time what is too easy? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Do you want to get some water in the room? Yeah, can we hammer it in? Okay. Can you be my assistant to hammer it in? I can. Okay. I can, depends on the pain. <laughs> Alright, well, we will decide later, yeah? Pain. But uh, Alright, question four. Which is how many marks? <laughs> question four, uh, two marks. You guys laughing, but that's really important for me because no, no. <laughs> I'm not putting mathematics and I'm really struggling and I'm trying to make, you know, just to barely pass, that's all, simple okay. as that. Uh, but please don't be that classical example who aims for 24 and just misses half a point and then fails, okay? No, 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 I hard, mean, yeah. <laughs> all right, question every four. point is welcome, but... Okay, question number four, two or three marks, okay? Let's say two or three marks. Uh, type of, but again, maybe this type of question will not come up. Maybe question number three will not come up. Oh so, my God. Like that. Yeah? Uh, don't scare me, please. So, so, who knows? <laughs> you need I'm to be terrified prepared. for mathematics to do this. Of course. Fucking not, it's totally. Right, question number four. We have bacteria in a dog shelter. We have progression every 15 minutes. The number of newly infected dogs is the number of dogs infected in the previous period plus additional two dogs. How many dogs in total would get this bacteria after two hours have passed? Assume there was just one infected dog at the start. At the start, I have one infected dog. First thing I note down, okay, one dog. And this is, at the bottom, by the way, I will just uh, jot down time, what time it is, okay? Time zero 15. minutes, zero seconds. Oh, I... Yeah, time nothing, I start my clock. At the beginning. Yeah, I begin. I begin, I have one dog. 15 minutes have passed. How many newly infected dogs do I have? You're gonna have one, no. Every 15 minutes, the number of newly infected dogs is the number of the dogs Another infected. One. Plus two, the number plus two. Plus so you two. have one plus two, three. Yeah. It says it's uh, plus additional two dogs from what we had previously. Yeah. Okay, so plus three. So two of every 15 minutes. Additionally, compared to the last one. Ah. However, make sure you look at those numbers properly. What I'm saying and trying co to communicate here is that after 15 minutes oh. in total, I have four dogs infected. Yes, not yeah. three. Compared. Three newly infected plus one which was infected before. Yeah. Wait, you yeah. have two newly infected plus what you have previously, which is one plus two, three. No, 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 no. If you look at the actual sentence, and that's the whole point that I'm trying to make, is that the number of newly infected dogs, okay, newly infected dogs, is the number of dogs infected previously. Maba, maba. Plus two. So yeah, yeah I definitely need to read it five times first. Yeah, sorry, one more time. After 10 minutes, 30 minutes, you have 10 dogs? Uh, well, let's try. Yeah, because now now we will have five popping up, five newly infected dogs Plus after Plus four, minutes. nine. So after half an hour, all together, I would have indeed nine dogs infected. Yeah, and so this is the only way to make sure yet that we are using arithmetic progression. Yeah, and that's how the question was structured, really. It's not, um, it's it's not nine, it's eight. It should be eight. Yeah. It's not. Why? Because we have 3d4. Oh, it's three. nine. Sorry, sorry, it's nine. <laughs> <laughs> One plus three is four. It's nine, five yeah. Is nine. Okay. 
Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Nicholas yeah. Sarsnick Penn. Yeah. Are, are you okay, guys? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's still holidays. Like, uh, yeah? okay. I just woke up. <laughs> Great. He's carrying a and good. That's my aim. One of the aims. Okay. One, three, five, seven. You can just imagine it's going to be nine and eleven and blah 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 blah. It keeps going until we stop it. Okay. Until we close uh, the shelter, burn it down, and there's no more dogs. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Capito. Great. In two hours, it stops. Uh, yes. In my country, they're just walking on the street. It's like they're not in shelter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, same. Anyway, arithmetic progression. That's what I notice from there. Okay, I keep going plus two, plus two, plus two all the time. Clearly, from number to number, right? Week 8.5, this is exactly what we defined as arithmetic progression. So you go to your appendix, which in this document is right at the end. In, on Saturday, it will be a separate document on your desk. Exactly the same appendix that I'm attaching to you will be with you. Okay, so for arithmetic progression, sum of arithmetic progression, when we want to add up all the numbers in this progression, we uh, uh, we calculate n multiplied with 2a plus n minus 1 times d over 2. Hmm. Yeah, that's the formula you get from the appendix, cool. which clearly shows that you need three numbers. You don't know what is n, you don't know what is d, you don't know what is a. Oh, I see that. <laughs> no, because the question, okay, it doesn't say right here, but it will say if something similar comes up, use arithmetic, uh, use, sorry, use appropriate formula to do it. Or I will take the time so big that you won't be able to actually write them all out and add them. Yeah? The whole point is to apply shortcuts. And shortcut is a formula. Okay? Now, that's the formula we need. From formula I know I need those three items. I now identify those three items from my progression. A, as defined in the appendix, and as you should know, it's always the first item. First number. One. D is the difference. Exactly what we keep adding from number to number as we move. Two. 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 It's always plus two, plus two, plus two, right? That's the common difference. N, is what? How many total numbers will I have? Not total of them. Uh, not total of them, two. but how many of them? Yeah, so how many of them would you think we need? In two hours, two and hours, we go every eight, 15 minutes. Eight, eight, and the first one, nine, no? Exactly, that's the nine. Yeah, so every 15 minutes, which means in one hour, we have four of them. Oh, right. Yeah, in two hours, four and four, that's eight. But we have time zero as well in this case, so nine numbers would have to be added. Okay, so we have those, S9 nine is 9 times 2 multiplied with 1 plus, well, 9 minus 1 is 8, times difference of 2 over 2, 9 multiplied with 2 plus 16 over 2, which is 9 times 18 over 2, and that's 81. Okay, boom, 81 dots would be that. Okay, that's it. <laughs> we are on question four of the sixth moving to five. Okay, any questions about dogs? You what happened to the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, no, the best. The best. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Next. Right, next. Uh, Shamsha, I would appreciate if you did not record it, okay? Thank you. Oh. Thank you. I have a very bad like, memory. Okay. Can I just repeat the rule then? Like, you can, okay. Please, because I have a very bad, bad memory. I can say before you and send it to, over to you, you can spread it to your colleagues as well if you oh. want to. Yeah? Well, yeah? Okay, I can email that. Okay, because that could be easily PDF and you can get that. Yeah? No problem. Uh, it's just how you explain it. Yeah. You get it. It's PDF. Oh, no. ah, yeah, okay. PDF's not talking, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> there are videos which are talking. Anyway, fine, fine. Okay. <sighs> right. Question number five. Two marks. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> No, because so far on each mock test we've got the marks 
but not in this yeah. one. So it's yeah. a big mess here. I think it's good for everyone to know, you know. Yeah. Not Max. Yeah. Okay. Degree sequence. Yeah. What is the degree sequence about? It's about how many connections each one of those vertices contain, and we put it in in ascending order, right? My suggestion is for you to write down the degree right next to the vertex, collect it in order afterwards. So V has degree two, C has degree three, three connect. Uh, yeah. yeah. E three, D five, A four, F three. Collect it <coughs> in order. Two, three, three, another three, then four, then five. Three threes, yeah. Boom, done. Also, you have to be in order. Yeah, smaller to largest. I'm not being funny, but that's two marks for A and B, or two for A and two for B? Or? No, no, one and one. <coughs> yeah, one and then one. Question yeah. five, two marks. Yeah. What for each? For counting the lines. I, I think yeah, right. you get yeah. Happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Happy Hanukkah is a Jewish one. Not kindergarten, not exactly. Jewish. Yeah. Jewish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. One. Four. Yeah? And so on. Four, one, four, six, three, three, zero. And that's all that's needed from us. Yeah, if you're lucky enough to get this question. Uh, yeah. uh, one, one, three, three, four, 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 six. Yeah. Which, which one is zero? Can you put it? G, in the middle. All right. It's okay. not connected. Yeah. 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 It still does exist. It belongs to the structure. has no connection. Uh, OK. Now, let's think about it. If, if that sort of question doesn't come up, what similar question can I ask? Anybody have any idea? Spanning tree uh, protocol, no. <laughs> well, that's no. different. We didn't cover that in the module. Yeah? So what else can, we, can I ask? Very simple. About if, I, if I give you a graph, OK? Let's say I give you the picture of a graph. Uh, I can't ask you for degree sequence. What else can I ask you for? If it's Eulerian. If it's Eulerian. What's say. the biggest? With the most connections, so. uh, okay, that would be very easy. But yeah, okay, which is the maximum connections? Uh, which vertex has the maximum number of edges? Fine. Uh, no, like weight. Weight. Hmm? weight. There are no weights in this one. Weight is always the cost of traveling from one place to the other. There are no numbers on the edges. Yeah, we don't have that. No, but okay, Eulerian, Hamiltonian. I can ask you for that, or I can ask you for a type of a path, type of a circuit. Yeah. Or an mm -hmm. example of a circuit. Example of a path. Yeah. Do we remember what is a path? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Path is just traveling from one place to the other. Yeah. Circle is traveling from one place to the other, but then coming back to the same place. Yeah. Exactly. And then Hamiltonian is one that goes through. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can go, You can go, go through it instead of going around it. All right. It goes through all the vertices yeah. without repeating. Yes. And Eulerian goes through every edge without repeating, yeah? So those little definitions from week 10 ensure that you remember them, okay? Just in case, yeah? There are only so many possibilities I can ask you for, yeah? In every topic. It's not a lot, really. And everything at some point has been covered <coughs> either in seminar activities or the video or mocks. There's nothing completely new that I will be asking, okay? Now, uh, find S8. The eighth partial sum of infinite geometric progression, which starts with 448, then goes 56, then 7, and so on. Geometric progression. First thing you do, oh, because you are asked for the sum, you are going to your appendix. Okay. In the appendix, you will find a nice formula waiting for you. Yeah, and that would be a two mark question as well, question six. Sweet. Yeah. Okay, so SN. Yes. Who's preparing it? No, I, I did say the same document will be separate on your desk. Yeah. And who is going to? Who is going to supervise the, the exam? You or somebody no, no, else? No, no, supervisors. 
So can we pay them? <laughs> <laughs> How much? Yes. Yeah, no, but yes. I'm not being funny. But on the last one, we had our math teacher. On this one, is gonna be the same guy or new guys or more guys? Are you or... trying to check who's you got a bribe? <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, but on the first one, you had a math teacher. Oh, that was different time. Yeah. This one is going to be the same. Also, it's going to be the same in the class here. Yeah. Okay. That's so good. <laughs> no. Okay, let me know. Paper, paper, paper. It's too good at least. Okay. okay, let's proceed. So nobody, uh, nobody knows what's happening on Saturday, yeah? Okay. No. Well, I know. Tottenham plays Liverpool. Okay, so... It's going to come in the morning. And then something's going to happen, yeah? Exactly. Okay. All right. What time is the exam? 9.30. 9.30 now. Jesus. It doesn't say anyone. What time is it? Lovely. What time do you need to be there? 9 o'clock. Nine fifteen <laughs> maximum. Being right? early means being on time. Eh? Be early because if you are late by more than half an hour, you are not allowed to be in the exam room. Okay. Quarter past nine, you will be welcomed by your invigilator into the classroom. At which point, you will not be able to talk at all. You need to have all your uh, material that you don't need. I mean, all the mobile phones, smart devices, anything else that's not authorized in your bags and at the front of the classroom okay you they will do it properly. you can only have calculator pen pencil and maybe a ruler possibly highlighters nothing else on your desk and your id card with you yeah mm. that's the key as well just like with the test you need your and it's still better let's say yeah. if worse comes to worse and you submit a zero work mm -hmm. it's still better to attend that not attending isn't it yeah have a go feel the paper know what pain you have to yeah. <laughs> Just don't come with attitude, I will definitely fail, yeah? Try try your best, of course. Well, we'll... Yeah. 53? Yeah. Uh, yes, you will start with the actual exam. Yes. There will be no more mocks. The people in the room will not be marked because they're not going to be They cannot feel No, they won't be used. Okay? Out. Should I be concerned with so many of you, not only today but beforehand, telling me that the my students have been helping you during the test? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So are we okay with what's happening on Saturday? Yes, we are. Yeah. Do you Positive. know what classrooms you are on? No. Not really. Okay. We'll you should out. get individual emails. If In the worst case scenario, you come in early, you will see a board right next to the reception with everybody's names, and you will know what room number and what seat number you have. Yeah? You are arranged by seven. What time does the campus open in the morning on Saturday? Uh, 8.30. 8.30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on with question six because I don't want to have some sort of battery to run out before the end of the session. Yeah. Yeah, we, we always think about that as well. Okay. Good. <laughs> so question six, S eight. Uh, I'm looking for some. I know. I know, but I thought you kept it, looking so. and then talking, looking and talking. I thought we're gonna start it all. Okay. Great. So, sum of infinite geometric progression. Geometric progression n times, no, a times, sorry, a times 1 minus r power n over 1 minus r. That's the formula from the back, from the appendix, which will be a separate document on Saturday. Okay? Now, you need to know r, you need to know n, and a, clearly, right? What was the sn then? sn is sum. Sum, which we are looking for, yeah? Look in the paper, it comes out. It's on the back. N is the index, N is the nth number. Yes. Is it S N or S N? N. N, N for the number. 
You know, huh? Some of numbers. That's it. Okay, that's just notation. Okay. Oh, right, let's proceed. So, what is R? R is a ratio. Ratio. How do I get a ratio? You have to get from the dividing. Yeah, by dividing. You divide him yeah. by eight. Look, yeah. I have four, four, eight, five, six, and uh, fifty-six. That is, and then seven. In geometric progression, I keep multiplying the previous number by a ratio to get the next number, which means to get the ratio, I can get any of the numbers like seven and divide by previous. I reverse the operation. Cool. Similarly, fifty-six divided by four, four, eight. Both of them will, will give, give you, you eight. Yes, which is zero point one two five. Yeah. Okay, n is the number of numbers. How many numbers I'm adding? Eight. Eight. Yeah, okay. I'm looking for eight partial sum. Eight numbers are being added. A is? Four for eight. Yeah, because that's where my progression starts. Cool. A is always the beginning item. So I have everything. I need to go as eight is equal to four, four, eight times one minus 0 0.125 power eight over 1 minus 0 0.125 and the rest is just pressing some numbers in a calculator you can t you can type all of that at once into calculator press left press equal sorry make sure you have scientific calculators with you on Saturday and this question give us how, how many marks uh, two. Two. Anybody calculating this or shall we just move on? Because that's... that's yeah, let's, let's, let's just move on. Let's move on, man. Yeah, let's move on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. Chop, chop, too much talk. Next. Yeah. I can come back to that at the end if you really, really want to. Yeah, that, that's good. We can look yeah. after the exam, maybe. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe not after the exam. All right, okay. Cool. Question seven. Uh, we have Samsung, who is developing two brand new types of SSDs. They claim both can exceed the reading speed of 580 megabytes per second. In order to prove this, they perform some experiments, and then we have some expected values and standard deviations coming back from those experiments. Um, now, notice in this question, 580 megabytes per second is just a target, okay? It's not actually going to be used as part of the answer at all. Uh, it's just there to uh, to kind of say what we are trying to achieve. Anyway, uh, the actual question is here. Make a comparison between the two models of SSD based on the results above. Include explanation of expected value and standard deviation. Write approximately 100 words, okay? Don't worry about those, of course. Uh, so, what I want is definition of expected value, definition of standard deviation, then quick comparison. Three sentences, maybe four maximum, that's it. Okay? Now, definition of expected value. Go on. Am I lucky enough to have somebody explain it for me? No. No. I'm really lucky. <laughs> I'm out of luck. Okay. So I need two days, guys, yeah? <laughs> that's it, we need one. Okay, yeah, that's all, yeah? One night. Yeah, yeah good, good, good. Good. I've got the. Yeah. Okay. I'm really sorry, but I've got the feeling some of the some of those things we didn't we, we never covered them in class, never. Well, they should be covered in class. I wasn't there, so I cannot see whether it was it wasn't. Okay, it should be, but I don't know. Uh, it definitely was mentioned with Ali during his revision in week eleven. Yeah. Ali, yeah, revision, yeah, not our actual lecture. But uh, that I don't know. But okay, expected value quickly one sentence definition. Expected value is a representative figure for the data set. One number that represents the data set. It's an average. Yeah, as short as possible. That's I cannot give you a shorter definition than that. Single number which represents data set. An average. Okay. <laughs> That's expected value. Standard deviation measures consistency of data or measures the spread of data. It's all about how much variation of data do we have around <laughs> the center. Are we consistent enough or are we all over the place? Yeah. That's all. So you give me those quick definitions, then you say which one is faster on average, in this case of SSDs, and which one is more consistent. You said three, it was expected value. 
standard deviation and the third one was there is no third one third one is just about okay. uh, comparing them okay so to compare them i draw a little table the table in itself will not score you marks you just need to make one sentence about the table but it does help if you just create a table with those two items in our case the two <coughs> ssds and expected value at the top e of x and standard deviation for which we normally use sigma and just extract the numbers from the text to make it uh, easier for yourself to see. So S01, expected value 512, and standard deviation 8 megabytes per second. S02, expected value 528, and standard deviation 42. Yep. Now, I did say when I gave you the definition of expected value that expected value is an average. So on average, the reading speed of S02 is higher than the one of S01. So I conclude here, higher is better, yeah, in this column, that S02 <coughs> is faster on average. It can read my data faster on average, even though it varies, right? Every time I try to read data, it varies, but on average, it's better. When it comes to uh, standard deviation lower is better because standard deviation is variation of data. So it's sort of saying 528, let's say, is the average here. I'm going plus 42, getting amazing reading speeds, and minus 42 most of the time. So the discrepancy is quite high, which means the data is not consistent enough, right? Or the reading speed is not consistent. So I say, Making only one sentence, S02 is performing better on average, but S01 is more consistent. Job done. Yeah, that's all. Our data are lying 528 plus 42, they never get to 580. So yeah, yeah, no, no, the highest. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah, the target at the beginning of the question was 580, so you can say that none of the SSDs are actually performed the way they marketed. Okay. And this question is how many marks? Uh, two. So we don't have to write hundred words. Can be no, less. Really, really three sentences will do. Yeah. Right. Hundred is normally the limit. Max. Right. Yeah. Don't go over that. If we want. Yeah. <laughs> That's as it. Okay. Question eight. <laughs> okay. Question eight. Two marks. Okay, question eight, two marks. Um, make a decision, which one of the following statement is false? So we're looking for the false one. I will go through all of them, just to remind you of definitions. But at the end of the day, only one of them should be picked. Under no circumstances, <laughs> two or three. Okay, always one. So, a uh, cycle is Hamiltonian if it visits every vertex exactly once. Right, good question. True. Somebody said True. it before. So statement A, is true. Just to remind you, Eulerian graph is the one which uh, contains Eulerian cycle, and Eulerian cycle is a cycle which goes through every edge exactly once. Yes. Yeah? One time. And Hamiltonian is all about vertices. Yeah? Hamiltonian graph contains Hamiltonian <coughs> cycle which goes through mm. every vertex exactly once. So, definitely, statement A is true. B. A simple graph with six vertices has up to 15 edges. What do we say? False. Okay, just to remind you, okay, simple graph contains at most one edge between any two vertices. Any two. Which means, if I consider, let's say, this one and that one, I must observe zero connections or one connection between them. As it is, at the moment, six vertices and no edges, that qualifies as a simple graph. Yeah, I have no connections between any... So it's not a graph. So it is simple, right? Now I added one edge, it's still simple. Yeah, this is still simple. Could it have three edges or four, or, uh, four edges, five edges, six or seven or eight, etc. Yeah. But it has an upper limit. What I cannot do, if I want to make it still simple, I cannot have a second edge between any two points, any two nodes. 
So why 15 has been mentioned is because we had a short formula for complete graph. Definition of a complete graph. Okay. Kn. Who recalls this one? N times n minus 1 over 2. Yeah. That was one formula you should remember. Is in the appendix? No, because it's too simple. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, look, what it's talking about, it's talking about complete graph. One which contains exactly one arc between two nodes. Okay. It is complete if every one of those vertices has n minus one connections. I have six vertices, which means every single vertex needs to be connected to the other five vertices on the graph. Six times five vertices. Yeah? Well, divided by two, yeah? So K6, the complete graph of six vertices will indeed contain 15 edges. And uh, is that complete at the moment? I think I'm missing something. I'm missing this one and I'm missing this one. Now it's complete. Every vertex is connected to all the other vertices. And that gives you 15. That's 15 edges. It all can't be more, so that's three. Yeah? The statement B is therefore true because a simple graph will have up to that many edges. If I try to add a 16th edge somewhere, I'm duplicated, I'm, I'm breaking the definition of a simple graph. So statement B is true. Right, so now we toss a coin. <laughs> yeah, except that you cannot have coin in the exam. <laughs> On the bottom, okay. So. Binary, binary, binary tree structure. I. Binary tree, we have a node or any node can have up to two children. Okay, so potential binary tree structure can look something like this. Yeah, that's a nice binary tree. Up to two. Up to two children, yeah. We call the top node root node mama yeah big mama if you like yeah two out on yours <laughs> yeah uh, notice though that big mama has no parents yeah not be at the other top uh, but there are also small small children there yeah and we call them leaves at the end of the tree you have a leaf oh leaf, wings leaf. actually how many leaves do we have here no, that's not a leaf. I only see three. Three leaves, yeah? Okay, so a leaf contains no children, root has no parent. Any other node on a binary tree can potentially be both parent and a child at the same time. Now, we are talking about, in statement C, about a root node. A root node cannot have children. Yeah, cannot have children. Cannot have children? Can. Of it course. Two. It already has two. Here. <laughs> oh, I that. So that's the fourth one. Look, root cannot have a parent. Leaf cannot have a child. But root can have a child. Three over three. Yeah? Well. And what do I have in the middle? Okay. Okay. So C will be true. Okay. C is true. No, it will be false. Which one? False. It's false. False. Root cannot have children. Because it's negative. False. False. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry, I didn't read. That's the it. That's the actual answer we are no. looking okay. for. It was the false one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well uh, done, Peter. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, that was just pure luck. If he's not watching, we'll get it all wrong. <laughs> no, I was going to get it wrong. <laughs> I'm, I'm not joking, I'm being serious. Okay. Statement C. Root node cannot have children. Yes, it can have children. If it doesn't have a child, imagine our binary tree with only a root node with no children, that's a very boring binary tree. Very useless in terms of storage of data and other applications. Okay, so root can have children, therefore C is false. We will go through D very quickly, just to verify D is true. It is possible to take a subgraph of any graph such that the subgraph is a tree. In principle, if we talk about any graph, 
uh, think about uh, when we apply Prim's algorithm, right? You can delete some of the edges and create a tree. Okay, when we apply a Prim's algorithm, the actual uh, target of Prim's algorithm is to find what we call minimum spanning tree. Okay, the shortest way of connecting all the dots. So, statement D is true. Okay, statement D would be true. And, and C is of course. Okay. okay. So once you identify one that is definitely false and you're 100% sure that you identify the false one, circle it and move on to the other direction. Come back and verify the well, other statement. But knowing that. Okay, statement uh, or question nine, rather. Uh, it looks okay, like so a two mark one. <coughs> two marks to question nine. Uh, a piece test equipment is used to check the quality of products on a production line. And then we have some data and probabilities. Okay, calculate expected value of faulty products. In other words, calculate the average. Uh, notice here, on the mock at least, I provided you with a row, empty row, which has to be populated. Yeah? Expected value, you have the formula in the appendix for it. Sum of x times p of x. Okay, x times p of x. That's your formula for expected value, summation of it. So you create another row, or fill it in if it's available, x times p of x, where you are just going to multiply the two rows. 0 times 0 0.02, <laughs> 1 times 0 0.11, etc. 2 times 0 0.26, 3 times 0, 2, 2. 4 times 0, 17. 5 times 0, 15. 5 times 3. No, 5 times 3 is 15. But ah, good luck. Okay. <laughs> well, sorry, I'm just you know, catching up. But thank you. Yeah, 0, 42. You're right. Okay, so we have all these numbers where you just multiply x with p of x data and likelihood of that data appearing uh, and all you're doing at the last stage is add them up yeah add up all the products you created <coughs> okay all of them are added only the one row the row you calculate some of the quotation of the quotation some of those ones Sum of all these products, and that happens to be in this mock 3.14. Got a good test. Comfortable with this question? Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, now, binary 3 in question 10. Okay, we have to create a binary 3, traverse it to put everything in order. Okay, so let's do exactly that. Now, for question 10, you and need to know alphabet. I'm sorry to interrupt, I gave a question 9, that was two marks Two again. marks, yeah. What's the alphabet? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so which alphabet? Yes. Uh, the green one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because some of you might know more than one. Two marks. Yeah, Depending or less than one. one. Or less than one. <laughs> <laughs> well, special cases, yeah? All right. Uh, no, as a hint, okay, uh, maybe it would help, maybe it won't. Uh, lots and lots of uh, daytime students in the past semesters and also daytime students of this semester, when they have seen a similar question on binary tree, uh, what they did, they literally just jotted down the alphabet. Because under exam conditions, under stress, even though you might know alphabet very well, you can swap P with Q or so whatever, and then the whole tree goes wrong and then you lose marks and so on. So, you might want to jot down the alphabet right next to the question. Yeah, there's no shame in that. Yeah, I'm not marking papers and saying ha ha ha. That loser <laughs> doesn't know alphabet. Yeah, you you can do that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. All right. What's the paper? <laughs> Binary tree is being constructed by accessing the array from left to right, from index zero all the way to the end. At the beginning, the first item will always become the root node, 
In which case, now the question, Pinocchio is going to be the root node. Mind your spelling as well. Oh, uh, um, us? <laughs> of course. Of course. Preserve your data, yeah? Don't jumble my data. <laughs> All right, so Pinocchio is the root node, it goes off. Next, the next item is Gargamel. When Gargamel enters the scene, I compare it to the root node first, which is Pinocchio, and if it's alphabetically lower, then it goes to the left. If it's alphabetically the same or bigger, it goes to the right. So Gargamel, G, appears sooner in the alphabet than Pinocchio. It's before. So if it's before, Gargamel becomes the left child of Pinocchio. So Gargamel ends up to be the left child of Pinocchio. And then I have Mickey. When I get the next item, the biggest misconception from students is that you always compare from the last item. That's not true. You always compare from the root. So when Mickey comes in, you compare it to Pinocchio. Mickey, M, is before P, Pinocchio. So I go to the left, and then I say, oh, Pinocchio already has a left child. So I compare Mickey to Gargamel. M is after G, so goes on the right. So Mickey happens to be uh, the right child of Gargamel. Sorry, actually always compare to the root is wrong. Always compare to the root and then move through the tree. Okay. Of course, so in that case, we compare to Pinocchio and then compare to Gargamel, yeah? yeah. Next, Terminator comes in, and ah, you again yeah. start from the. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Build 